The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Chapter 2, verses 22 to 40. When the day came for them to be purified as laid down by the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, observing what stands written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male must be consecrated to the Lord and also to offer in sacrifice in accordance with what is said in the law of the Lord. A pair of turtle doves are two young pigeons. Now in Jerusalem, there was a man named Simeon. He was an upright and devout man. He looked forward to Israel's comforting and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death until he had set eyes on the Christ of the Lord. Prompted by the Spirit, he came to the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the law required, he took him into his arms and blessed God and he said, Now, Master, you can let your servant go in peace just as you promised. <clears throat> because my eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared for all the generation to see. A light to enlighten the pagans and the glory of your people Israel. As a child's father and mother stood there wondering at the things that were being said about him, Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, You see this child. He is destined for the fall and for the raising of many in Israel, destined to be a sign that is rejected. A sword will pierce your own soul too, so that the secret thoughts of many may be laid bare. There was a prophetess also, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Ashur. She was well on in years. Her days of girlhood over. She had been married for seven years before coming a widow. She saw she was now 84 years old and never left to the temple, serving God night and day with fasting and prayer. She came, to, she came by just at the moment and began to praise God. And she spoke of the child to all who looked forward for the deliverance of Jerusalem. When they had done everything the law of the Lord required, they went back to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. Meanwhile, the child grew to maturity, and he was filled with wisdom, and God's favor was with him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, in Jesus our Lord. Today we are celebrating the Feast of the Holy Family. Jesus, Mary and Joseph being the model to each family in the church and in the world. On this great day, I would like to share with you the story narrated by our present Holy Father Francis when he celebrated 65th year of his birthday on December 17th in 2001. 
the story heading is like grandparents are the treasure he narrated that he heard the story when he was young which motivated him to devote himself in a special way to the elders too in a family there was a mother father and many children and old grandfather the grandfather was suffering from parkinson disease so at the table because of the sickness the shivering he used to drop the food mess up the table sometimes even he broke the plates the vessels and the bowls it was very disgusting to his son who is the father of the family now therefore he made a separate wooden table and he kept in the corner of the dining room and a small table and he made a wooden plates spoon or fork so that even propped down it won't be broken so he separated from the main table and kept in a corner and it went on for some years some years some months to father surprise his younger son was carving a big wood log it was a surprise to the father and asked the son son what are you doing and son said i am preparing a table table for what dad when you become old like our grandfather i wanted to offer this table in the same corner so that you will sit there and have your meal it won't be a disturbance for us my dear friends the small act of the sun opened the real eye the naked truth to see the cruelty of the son towards his father and he admitted his fault i realized his mistake he realized the worthlessness of the parents and he took back the father to the main table and whatever happened he started to embrace and be thankful holy father continue to say that a community a family a church which does not care protect honor the elders does not have the future it is the duty of every member in a family to honor one another especially the sick and disabled and the old we are invited today to introspect look into ourselves how far we are in our family living how much do we have the place for everyone in the first reading we see that abraham in the 15th chapter being promised to be god that he will be blessed abundantly uncountable members in his descendants and today we are witnessing that judaism christianity and islam came from the tradition the clan of abraham multiplying huge in number like the stars uncountable in the skies god's words are real and true what we need to do is to trust completely in his providence the second reading beautifully we heard that abraham completely trusted in god and went to the new land and he was blessed because god is the creator he provides what we all need to do is relay surrender submit ourselves to the god the father and he was blessed then again we see that abraham and sara in their older age they felt that they cannot have an issue child but god's word realized they had a son and again we see the deeper unshakable faith of abraham sacrificing his only son 
Can you imagine? In the old age, God promised only one son, and he gave forward, he came forward to sacrifice. Such unshakable faith in God will bring all the blessings and strength to lead a happy life in the family. When you come to the gospel, we see Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. To make a beautiful church, beautiful house, what we need to do? We bring very good bricks or stones. The stones and the good bricks make a beautiful building. So also, to make a beautiful family, we need to have a sweet hearts. Sweet hearts make a beautiful home. The homily of paradise, a holy family. That is what we see in the gospel of today. The heart of Joseph, heart of Mary, heart of Jesus formed the holy family. In the human fragility, failures, Joseph had a doubt in the conception of Mother Mary. But he was an open-minded person. He had an open heart. He had a sweet, loving heart. When the message was revealed to him in the dream, he immediately received the message into himself and never doubted Mary. And he gave himself in taking care of Mother Mary and child Jesus. A father who has, heart, who has a heart of Saint Joseph, open heart, will bring and remain a blessing to the family. Let us look into the heart of Mother Mary. She already received the word of the Lord. And also, she surrendered herself to be pierced by the sword. Today in the blessing we see that, you know, they come to the church. So dedicated parents coming to the church with the child Jesus to fulfill the law of the Moses, as it was the tradition. So it's a ha happy time, a graceful time. Simeon comes and tells the prophet, sword will pierce your heart. Let us imagine, how would be the pain of Mother Mary in the graceful time, in a joyful time? Ever since from the conception, still bringing to the church, the temple, presenting Jesus, they went through innumerable sufferings, untold sufferings, so much pain and tragedy and trials all through their lives. And finally they came to present Jesus in the temple and someone comes and tells, a sword will pierce your heart. And Mother Mary remained calm, gentle, a beautiful heart accepted if God's will are willing to cooperate and go and walk with Jesus. When mothers, wives have the heart of like Mother Mary, any problem in the house is, will not be a problem, but it will be a stepping stone for the future glory. We see the life of Jesus for 30 years. He was completely obedient to the God, to the parents. Though he was the son of God, he gave himself. He was the true son to Mary and Joseph. He never felt, I am the incarnate son. But he was always obedient, taking care and remaining with the parents. Let us examine and see the life of today's children. How much money time they spend on the lessons and how much time they spend on the medias. How many children are willing to come to God's presence? Jesus, though he was son of God, at the age of 12, he revealed out his future plan. He sat in the temple, pondering and arguing reading the word of the Lord, the scribes and the learned persons. At the age of 12, Jesus knew his mission, his future. How many of our children knew their future? Even sometimes I used to ask when you go for house visiting, grown-up adults, 25 about, or sometimes 28, what is your plan, future? What are you planning? 
Ah, still I am at the process of discovery, finding out. But Jesus, at the age of 12, he knew what would be his future, the mission he understood to him. My dear friends, we need to focus so much attention into our family lives. The father must give total love and dedications to wife, and the wife must have a total acceptance and dedication to the husband. The parents must have complete sacrificial love to children, and children need to be obedient and humble in learning the great things from the parents. When we listen to the parents and take care, when we also grow as a older, our children, your children will take care in your needs. So today is a great invitation for each one of us. Let us continue to surrender our family members at the altar of the Lord and pray for God's guidance and the wisdom. Let Jesus, Mary and Joseph remain as a model for each one of us. For the final reflection, I want to say that let us make our home a place of confessional rather than making it court room. To the young couple, someone advised that, see that you make your home the place of confessional. In the confessional, what we do is, we admit, we feel sorry, we long for the forgiveness. When we come with an open heart and mind and confess our own sins, our Heavenly Father, who is merciful, kind and forgiving, gives absolute pardon and forgiveness for the sins that we really confess. So also, when the husbands, when the wives, when they make their own acceptance of their faults and failures, there comes joy and happiness and understanding. In the court room, what happens? They are arguing to one another. Sometimes innocents are punished. The victim punished. The culprits go free. That must not be the place in our families. My dear friends, let us take the model of Holy Family as our model and be faithful and witnessing members to the world that God will bless each one of you and every family. Amen.